Good morning, Bartholomew. Welcome to the Hustlers Kung Fu Show. I got your email. And I was wondering, how will I answer this? Because the general topic of it was, how do I make money online? Now, let's focus on I, which is you. How do you make money online versus the expected answer you want me to give you, which is some technique, some something slick, something quick where you can, quote, make some money online. It is 2016. The internet is starting to wake up. People are like, hey, you can make money online. So all of the easy, low-hanging fruit stuff is flooded. Can you make money? Yes, but that's not what you really want to know. What you really want to know is, that's what you're looking for, you, for you to make money. So let's talk about this. Should you do a blog? Should you do a YouTube channel? Should you do an online store? Should you do a website? Should you do a gossip site? Should you do a Facebook page? What should you do? And Bartholomew, I don't fucking know. And the reason is, I don't know you. And the reason I'm answering this to you is, is like that old question. What's the best way to pick up chicks? Be nice. Dress a certain way. All just general bullshit that typically does not work. So if you want me to give you a general bullshit answer, I will. Start something online. That's how you make money online. But for a more focused answer, for something that's relevant, something that will really help you, I need to know more. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I understand that you're broke. I understand you have no money. I understand that your dad said, look, Bart, you're going to have to get the fuck out the basement at some point in the very near future. I totally understand that. And that's not my problem. I know it sounds harsh. I know it sounds really, really harsh, but that's not my problem because it's your problem. And if you want me to care more about your problem than you do, it will never, ever be solved. Today's episode of the Hustler's Kung Fu Show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at the first link below. But hold on, I've got some extra stuff if you go that far. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your phone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Once again, to take advantage of your free Audible trial, it's the first link below the video. Never! You'll be in someone else's basement or doing some other crazy stuff. So take this information whatever way you can. For you, you, to start a business online, take inventory of what you know how to do. And if you don't know how to do anything, learn. You know that scene from Swordfish where the guy was like, I don't know how to drive a five-speed nigga, you know. John Travolta pointed a, sub, a machine gun at his head and said, learn. Next thing you know, he, he was driving. Learn. So let's dial it down a little bit. What should you focus on? The number one thing that you should focus on is what you know how to do well. Now, understand, I didn't say focus on what you like to do. I said focus on what you know how to do well. When you start going into a different direction, I don't care if it's a blog, I don't care if it's a Facebook page, I don't care if it's uh, a YouTube channel, a podcast, there is something called a learning curve. If you are an online citizen, if you're a digital citizen, you have certain online skill sets, certain things are gonna be easier than others for you because you already know how to put together a blog. You already know how to get traffic. You already know certain things. But if you are broke dick Danny, you know, just penniless Priscilla, you've never done anything other than play video games, you only do stuff that makes you happy or comfortable, and you've not pushed yourself to learn a discipline or skill, your learning curve is going to look like a hockey stick. Doop. Boom! <laughs> That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be flat. It's going to be like, oh man, that is a steep motherfucker right there. And that's what you're facing with. So while you're climbing that steep hockey stick, 
Focus on stuff you know how to do. Now, I, I get this question all the time, Bartholomew. I get it all the time. Well, I don't know how to do anything. Well, what you're saying is you don't appreciate yourself because clearly you know how to do something. You know how to use a phone. You know how to play video games. So stop looking at the low hanging fruit. A lot of that stuff's gone or it's flooded. And you're going to need certain skill sets to penetrate those markets to be successful. Now, don't read that as don't try it. Don't do it. I'm saying that once again, remember that. Oh, look at that steep climb right there. That's what you're facing. Not saying you can't do it, but be realistic. I was having a conversation with someone last night who has an online business and He's been at this like seven years, you know, he did a million dollars. But when I called him and I figured they had left home, he's like, oh, no, I'm still in the office. It was like 730 at night. This is what you're looking at. Now, let's just boil this down to what do you know what to do? Because I get this question and people like, uh, you know, I was doing one of my I will teach you how to make money webinars. And someone that put in a chime that selling the accessories for medical marijuana was going to be hot okay let me tell you how the weed game is going to go all of those folks who are in washington that who are in colorado the so-called point zero ground zero of weed they have knowledge connections money and skills you really think that you're just going to come in there not knowing anything it's going to be people who are industry and it might not even be the guy who owns the weed shop it might be the guy who works in the weed shop because he knows what the customers want he knows what the customers are looking for he knows what brand sells better than others because he is at the point of contact with the customer so if you're not selling weed right now and if you don't know weed very well and i'm not talking about you got your own buds your own little recipe you got your own little weed pot right there in the windowsill Mm -mm. I'm talking about where you're in a situation where you're seeing dozens or sometimes maybe hundreds of customers a week. You're selling the weed. You're getting that feedback. Those are the people who are going to win. <laughs> Those are the people who are going to win. So if you want to do weed, because it sounds good, it's sexy, and I think it's going to be a tremendously growth industry, you need to move your ass out to Washington, California, Colorado, somewhere where that the weed thing's going on. You need to go out there, network, get in, work in the shop. You, that's what you need to do if you want to play that game. And then when it comes to your state, move back with your knowledge. That's what it's going to take. Because many people, and I'm a member of a lot of groups, it's kind of funny where a lot of people are going back with selling stuff online. They're going back to traditional selling methodologies. Who knew? Who knew? Kind of the shit that I started with. But this is about you, Bartholomew. This is about you. All right. Step one. Do this. Turn off your phone. Turn off your computer. Turn your tablet over. Matter of fact, put that stuff in another room. Put it in another room. And you sit down with your thoughts and ask yourself this first question. What do I know how to do well, not necessarily like it, that I could do for the next 5, 10, 15 years. And I know, like, whoa, 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 yo, 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 Glendon. The internet changes daily. True. True. But some things don't change. People want to buy a service. Someone's got to create the service. People want to pay for the service. There's a payment process. There's just certain things that are never going to change. So stick with me. Ask yourself, what can you do? for a long, long, long time. Because typically, it's gonna take some time for you to be successful. This YouTube channel, which is moderately successful in the world of video, I didn't make a dime from this channel for six months and I was uploading sometimes two and three and four videos a day. I was spending hours uploading videos, hours uploading videos. So ask yourself, what could you do for a long time? And don't say, hey, 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 once the money starts coming in, I'll be happy. No, you won't. Uh, Kurt Cobain, millionaire, over OD, kill himself because he had demons. Money does not solve demons. So chase happiness first, money second. All right, so once you have pinned down 
what you could do for a long time, what you could do for a long, long, long time, you know, love, love it long time. You get the full service with the happy ending, right? After you figure that out, then once you figure that out, then you go to the other room, you get your stuff and you start researching people who are doing what you can do. And then you start looking for shit that's missing. You go to Amazon and you look at book reviews and you look at the things that they missed in their books. You look at that stuff. Now, the things that I told you could literally take you a few weeks. Those two things, two, two, two could take you a few weeks to do. See, this is another thing. You cannot shortcut your way to success. So if it takes you six months, I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know, Bartholomew, I know, I know. If it takes you six months to nail this down, then you will be easy, it'll be easier for you to scale up and make money. Because what's the old adage? Measure twice, cut once. Well, and this is the thing with internet, measure 10 times and execute. Measure 20 times and execute. Measure 40 times and execute. Measure 60 times and execute. This is the internet thing. I drive people crazy. I burn through email lists because I'm always testing stuff and I'm driving people crazy because the internet changes. So that's what, how you should make money online based upon the position of strength, based upon a knowledge base. And let's talk about what if you have strength, knowledge base and stuff that nobody online wants to pay you for. That's another reality. And this is another reason for you to do the exercise because you might have this thing in your back pocket like, well, I'm real good at this, so I'll try this. And if that doesn't work, I'll do this. But if you haven't validated it, you haven't tested it out, eh, you know, you could be wasting a lot of time. All right. So you don't know what to do. You have no skill sets. You are just not really good at anything. This is something to be, this is going to be hard. It's like, I'm just going to rip the scab off. You're going to have to fucking experiment. You're going to have to do that thing that people call wasting time. You're going to have to try something and see if you like it. Try something and see if it makes you horny. Try something and see if it's fun. And if you're like, ooh, that orgasm was good. That's a clue that you can probably spend some time there. Just saying. Just saying. Now, how does one pick one thing? Because this is the thing. Everyone is like, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste time. I want to do something, get results. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about wasting time. When I got into the commercial office furniture business, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I knew how to make sales calls. I knew how to get appointments. I didn't understand the nuance of selling a $50,000 package was way different than selling a million dollar package furniture. So I was learning on the job, making a lot of mistakes. So this is what I had to do. Literally, I would make a hundred fucking calls a day, getting appointments, sitting there asking people what went wrong. Cause I lost this one job. It was advanced disposal. And I was like, Hey, why didn't I get the job? Cause I thought they really wanted me to have it. And they said, well, the issue was with your print. Because I worked for a company, we didn't have an in-house graphic designer. Because if you're putting together a presentation package and the you got someone who brings their presentation package and it looks like this, looks like a book, and then your stuff looks like a bunch of stuff in some folders, just based on social proof presentation, you're at a disadvantage. So I was constantly at a disadvantage. And this is one of the reasons that I got into the used furniture market because I didn't have to do the dog and pony show because we didn't have that asset in house and to talk to a designer, to do a print, $100, $200, $50, $300, just to do a print to present, which no guarantee of making money. I was like, okay. So I just started really, really wearing it out, making a lot of sales phone you know, sales calls. And I was a hundred percent commission. I had a draw for three months. Once that draw was over, uh, it was like I had to make it rain or I wasn't eating, which really prepared me to start having my own business because it's pretty much what you're doing, except you can say you work for company A or you work for company Z. Well, I learned from that experience and that is a methodology that I take to everything. Do a lot of stuff, just hit it hard 
and you start to see trends and you start to develop data because let's talk about my journey onto YouTube and my journey into selling an information product online, which was my first book. This is the path. This is the path. And I want you to hear me, Bartholomew. I spent not one year, not two, not three, not four, not five. I spent a decade in the storage auction business before I wrote my first book. Let's just break that down. I spent um, 49. So at the time, I spent 25% of my life in one field to gain the information to write that one book. 25% of my life. So even though the book had issues and I made a lot of mistakes, the knowledge was solid. The knowledge was like, you know, just, uh, I mean, you know, rock fucking hard. And that's what got me through with all the mistakes and errors and stuff I made. Because I knew what I was talking about. I knew it inward and outward, backward and forward. And today, for you to compete, for you to win online, you're going to have to have that kind of knowledge base if you're going to be organic. Now, if you're going to do paid traffic, you could just go ahead and get a funnel, come up with a good presentation and just move people through the funnel and make money. But you need money to create the funnel. You need money to get the traffic because... I don't really buy a lot of traffic. I this month I spent maybe 500 bucks and it wasn't targeted. It was just an overall branding type deal. And that's kind of it. So if you want to spend money online and you want to make money online, start thinking in 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month. 20,000 a month. There are people who spend that per day. And I'm talking about the 20,000. There are people who are spending 20, 30, 40, 50. There are some companies spending a million dollars a day on online advertising. Yes, that's 365 million a year if they spend every day. Yep, that's what's going on. So with that said, if you're going to play the spin game, then you have to wonder and prep yourself for higher conversion cost. So with the higher conversion cost, even if you have the money, then you have to spend the money right. See, th this is the thing, Bartholomew. I've been doing online sales in some fashion or form since 2000. You know, I, I, let's just, you know what, let's just take eBay and Amazon off the table. I did more salesmanship type stuff with Craigslist where I actually met people and had to convince them and upsell them. So that was more of, yeah, let's say I was doing Craigslist 2002, but let's just take eBay and Amazon completely off the table because that's a vendor type deal. That's not like selling. And with the selling of, inform of stuff, you learn how, what you learn was called buying language. When someone, see, sends, ah, when someone sends me an email, and I know that they're interested in buying my antenna go up and I respond to them differently. When someone says, sends me an email it's like, convince me that you're not full of shit, they're not interested in buying the product. They're interested in proving their hypothesis that I'm full of shit. That's their, that's their main goal. Their main goal is not to buy the product. It's not to buy the product. It's like, no, I don't want it. It's like, I think you're full of shit and I want you to prove it for me. Aha. See, you sent me to you to me and I saw these reviews and I, they don't look legit. Now, this is something that's real funny. Now, there's a bunch of videos, but put it in the comments. How many times have I sent out an email asking for reviews? I haven't done it. Actually, I've been deficient because that's something you should do as a salesperson, but I just haven't done it. So when I get a review or someone sends me something nice and lovely and makes me feel all warm and fuzzy, it's truly from them because most people have the intention of doing a review or leaving feedback. They're just busy. So when you've got that kind of skill set, it makes it easier for you to do things online. It just makes it so just some stuff for you to digest, just some things for you to think about, just some things for you to look at. Because if you don't know what you want to do when you want to grow up, if you have no clue to what direction you want to go in, you don't know what makes you come, 
you got to play around with it. You got to spend, quote, waste time looking at stuff, trying stuff, because this is the thing. As we sit here today, the day that you have today is gone. You're not going to get today back again. So time is going to continue that march, whether you're preparing yourself for the future or not. It's just going to keep marching forward. So while you're not, quote, wasting time, you're really wasting time because you're not doing anything. And this is another reason that I really stopped dealing with people who were trying to, like, start from scratch. Because I know that's the biggest market. That's where most people are. I understand that. But it doesn't make me happy dealing with folks who are in that situation on a one-on-one -on -one in a consulting type deal. Because essentially... You could spend a month online listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, watching this channel and get enough basic information to build your foundation of what you should do. And then only, you know, because like it's like if you have a business, if you're buying products, you're selling some, then I'm just more benefit to you as a consultant. But if you don't have any idea what you want to do, you're just kind of interested in looking for a quick hustle, some quick money. I, there's really no point in us talking. There's none because typically, and this is something else that's happening, and you, I don't know if you see it, that a lot of the, quote, hustles online are becoming very hard to maintain. They're becoming very challenging because when you never build anything, and let's go back to my 10 years, and I don't want to hear this stuff like, well, you're bragging, you know, you did the storage auction. No, no. If me saying something that's a matter of fact makes you feel bad about yourself, then you've got issues that I can't help you with. But when you are investing in something and creating something, which is way harder than finding a system and plugging in and following. The point, it's harder. It's harder. I will tell you that. Yes, it's harder, Bartholomew. It's much, much harder. But uh, I will share some with you that I, I haven't put out before. Because of those 10 years of you know 25% of my life at that time in this one area I was able to live off of just the pure information that one book lived off that for three years passive income I got to know what retirement was like I got to be there for a close friend who was sick I got to do a lot of stuff during that time so I learned a lot about myself that I would probably never quote traditionally retire which is sit around and do nothing and travel because I've traveled a lot early in life and, you know, one, two trips a year. I'm good. I'm good. So, and I lived in Japan, so I don't have to do all of this stuff. And, you know, which I think if you're 20 something, you should do. You should travel as much as you can. Get out of America. Do all of this stuff. You should do that. But at my stage in life, I'm good with a few trips. So my motivation for doing what I'm doing is really different than your motivation of doing what you're doing, Bart Hollywood. You're just trying to hit a quick lick. And I'm telling you, dial it down a little bit. Think long term. Think five years. And I know people are like, hey, I don't believe in five year plans. And no, I don't believe in 10 year plans. And I don't believe in 20 year plans. Well, I do. I had a two year plan for starting this channel. I achieved that goal in 14 months. I have now a five-year plan for Hustlers Kung Fu Manufacturing Company. Yes, I just created it last October. So I have a five-year plan. And then for the grand scheme of things, I have a 10-year plan and I have a 20-year plan. Because whether they work out or not, or I, they happen the way that I want them to happen, at least I know where I'm going in life. And that's what's killing you, Bartholomew. You don't know where you're going in life. And any time that someone tries to tell you, Bart, you got, your dad told you, you got to grow up. You got to pick something and dedicate yourself to it. You don't have to do it forever and ever and ever. You don't. But at some point, you've got to make a choice. At some point, you've got to make a decision. Because if you don't make a decision, you're going to be 30-some, 40-something, 50-something, still trying to do X, Y, and Z. So... That's how you pick out what you want to do online. If your proclivities, your skill sets and stuff say do a blog and there's a lot of people in, let's say you're a cyclist 
No, better yet, say you do CrossFit. Huge, huge uh, segment of the fitness bucket online. Huge segment. You are going to CrossFit gym every day. You know a bunch of CrossFit people. If you start blogging about CrossFit, it's going to be easy. Because that's what you do. That's what you know. You know it in and out. You know the people. You know who Mitch Frolein is and all these other people. Because that's your tribe. That's your folks. Whereas if you were like trying to do what I'm doing, like I want to create a YouTube channel, but you have no topic, you have no experience, and I'm not trying to hurt your fucking feelings, so calm the fuck down. It's just going to be hard. And I know, and I'm going to just tell you something. You'll go talk to another YouTuber with a big channel, and they, they'll tell you, just put out videos every day. Just work hard. Just follow your passion. And if you want to, Put it in the comments. You can, rever you know, I'll reverse engineer it for you, because when I figured out that it was young girls driving the certain markets, and I was just like, "How the hell does this person have this many views?" And I was like, "Oh, because she's a member of her tribe and she's serving her tribe, and that's why it worked out." So when I started to look at it that way, it changed my internet life, and hopefully this will help you Bart. Hopefully this will help you. Seriously. So if you're at the end of the video and you're not one of those lazy people with a weak attention span, got a little deal for you. There's going to be a link at the bottom of the description because if you're on mobile, if you're on desktop, you know, you may, you may or may not see this stuff. But at the bottom of the description for this video, there's going to be a special link for you. That's going to be like special link for people who made it to the end of the video. And just take advantage of that. And it's going to be some good stuff. Very, very good stuff. So with that, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and come back.